Hello all, welcome to lecture 10 on predictive regression, predictive analytics, regression and classification uh, course. In this lecture, we will be doing hands-on with Python. So first, we will open our, I have a notebook, particular notebook. Let me open that notebook. Let me launch Jupyter Notebook. First thing, what we are doing here, we are calling bunch of, we are calling bunch of packages and we are loading those, that matplot library for plotting, numpy, pandas, matplot library, seaborn, uh, math, we are importing square root function from math. Then from sklearn data sets, we are importing Boston data sets. Then from sklearn, we are model selection, we are importing trend test split functions, linear regression, reach, reach, CV and mean squared error and variance inflation factor. So we are going to work with Boston house price data. So let me just compile all these things. So now they are all compiled. Now we are going to run call the Boston house price data. Now in the Boston house price data we are uh, we we are going to have lo lots of predictors and many of these predictors are correlated. Okay, so now in the Boston data sets, we have about 500 instances. The number of attributes is median value of the house of a house and then a uh, bunch of features are available CRIM cream stands for per capita crime rate by town ZN stands for proportion of residential land zone for lots over 25,000 square feet INDA stands for proportion of non-retail business acres per town. So that means how much commercial activities are happening. Charles Rivers dummy variable. If it is equal to one, that means tract bounds river and zero otherwise. Uh, NOx stands for nitric oxide concentration. So basically in that area of the house, what is the air pollution level? RM stands for average number of rooms per dwelling. H stands for the proportion of owner occupied units built prior to 1940. So weighted distance to five Boston employment centers. Index of accessibility to radial highways. Uh, full value of property tax pupil teacher ratio in the town that if how good the school is then uh, lower status of the population median value of the owner occupied homes so what is the value of the owner occupied homes that is what we are going to uh, predict so here is the the data set actually was first available from the UCL machine learning housing data set. Typically it is known as also Boston housing data set. Here is the uh, reference of the data set. So let's take a peek of the data. If you run, uh, so here is the, it has 506. Uh, 506 instances and 14 cases. So, two, three. 
so this crime to l stat this is essential these are all feature variable and price is the last column price is the predictor uh, the dependent or target variable so if we just get the features so here we are just getting the features and in this piece of code we are just running the, we are getting the price here we are in this uh, place we are just you know splitting the data into train and test here we are splitting the data into train and test and then we are doing some exploratory data analysis on the history. so one thing in the training and testing we are keeping 30 percent of the data for test and 70 percent of the data for training now we are drawing the doing some exploratory data analysis on the training data set here we are drawing the correlation matrix now if you look into the correlation matrix you will find an interesting phenomena so these dark purple which are near negative 0.7 so with this dis we are seeing that crime uh, indus nox uh, age all these are quite strongly correlated so the so there are quite a few variables are strongly correlated with the dis what was the dis let us go up and check it out weighted distance to five boston employment center so how far it is from the em employment center like all offices that has strong correlation with how close it to river nitrogen oxide level age of the house and you know all other variables so so here i am writing taking the x and then i am just running the variance inflation factor on this for a given values and then here all the vif are being printed so what we are seeing for nox the high it's and rm the variance inflation factor is very high p trato p tra pt ratio okay what is pt ratio let us check it out what was the pt ratio pupil teachers ratio has very strong correlation with has or you know multicollinearity variance inflation factor so there is a quite significant uh, variance inflation factor indicates that there is a quite significant uh, multicollinearity present so significant significant multi collinearity present in the data set okay so first we fit simple linear regression model first we fit simple linear regression in the model just we call lr lr dot fit explain y train and then we did prediction and then from the predicted value we here in this line we calculate the mean square error in sample mean square error and out of sample mean square error so in sample mean square error is 21.63 and out of sample mean square error is 
24.81 now now we are going to fit a reg regression with alpha value to be 0.01 uh, ad hocly chosen alpha value to be 0.01 so we are we just fit that model and now for that fitted regression model the in sample and out of the sample uh, rmac we calculated 21.63 and 24.8 so for ad hocly chosen alpha gives us some value which is some in sample and out some out of sample rmac which is close to the linear regression now if we fit a reg regression with a very high alpha value means lot of penalty there will be too much smoothing we choose alpha equal to 100 so what happens if we do that so what we are seeing that out of sample rmsc now is too high in sample is somewhere in the same range 2.21.63 for some reason but out of sample rmsc now it's too high we cannot really really you know do that so we fit regression with a different value of alpha different value of alpha cross validated k fold cross validation method so read cv essentially cross implement the regression reach regression with k fold cross validation and it computes the c computation cvmsc like you know mean square error these are the mean square error we are seeing so the best fit alpha is somewhere in the range of 0.01 so kind of now what we can do why we choose only these values somewhere between 0. Point, so we choose this 0. Point different alpha 0. 0.001 0. 0.001 0. 0.1 0. 1 and 10 these are the alphas so instead we choose thousands of values different choices of alpha where alpha will be taking values from 0 0.001 to 0 0.01 effectively and now we calculate the mean square error mean square error plotted against different values of alpha so remember the, and what we are seeing that it is actually minimum at near 0 0.04 so the best alpha that we can have is 0 0.0405 so best alpha that we can have is 0 0.0405 so we decide to fit the reach regression with best alpha you fit the reach regression with best alpha and then in sample and out of the sample rmse comes out to be something like that and then here i am i have written a small piece of code to compare the results okay I, so here four models that we have uh, fitted simple linear regression model Reach regression model with alpha to be 0.01 Reach regression with alpha to be 100 and then we did a search on alpha a grid search on alpha and the best alpha on that grid search give us 0.0404 now if you look in samples are all hovering around the same value 21.62 out of the sample is giving us best at 0 0.04 24.784 the other simple linear regression and reach regression is not 
much different but so we are only able to so that means in the reach correction is not in this particular case reach correction is not going to make a huge prediction accuracy going to improve much of a prediction accuracy if your prediction is the main target then uh, in this particular example reach correction is not going to improve a lot but the purpose of reach correction is not to make a best prediction the purpose of re reach correction is to make the reduce the multicollinearity in the data so that you can do a good statistical inference so you have to keep that in mind what is the purpose of the tool if you hope that you will do reach correction and that will somehow solve your reduce your predictive accuracy increase your predictive accuracy and reduce your mean square error to significantly that will not happen so the purpose of the reach correction remember that to reduce the standard error so my suggestion is go check in the next you should check try that if the it has re able to reduce the did uh, it is a self assessment assignment self assessed assignment that check if reach correction helps to reduce standard error so that is the purpose of the reach regression with that we will stop here and see you in the next video.